All right, take five. My son got a package from Uncle John. And I really want to thank you, Uncle John, for this. I'm trying to maintain here. But when my son opened this package, he just totally broke up. He lost it. And uh, I want to thank you, Uncle John, for this. So... This is my grandfather's things that he wore. Uh, Uncle John's dad, uh, my son's great grandfather. And so Uncle John sent this to uh, my son to carry on um, with the legacy of his stuff here. And um, it's all I can do. When I put this on the table, I totally broke up. I. This is my fifth try at a video here. Anyway, this is my grandfather and my grandmother on my mother's side. So there he is here, and my grandmother, who was a very strong woman, and these guys were old school, and they had eight kids. John was the youngest, my mom was the second oldest. And there's lots of memories here. So, I think I got most of my bawling my brains out out on this video. The first four were terrible. Uh, I just started bawling. So, we'll try and get through this. Anyway, uh, there's so many stories to tell. Um, I can only do a few. But um, this is my grandfather's bolo tie. His ring, uh, turquoise and silver, and I guess a tie pin here. And I want to, uh, my son wants to thank you, Uncle John. He totally broke up. As soon as he opened the box, he was done. He, he totally, totally lost it, uh, just like I did when I put this out on the desk. I, I, I totally lost it again. All right. So, uh, my grandfather, uh, here, let's start with the first story. Um, when he was a little kid in Arizona, he used to sneak out the window at night to go to the powwows with the Navajo Nation. The Navajos would have a powwow, and he would sneak out and go to the powwows with his buddies uh, that were uh, Navajos, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever, and then sneak back in the house. So that was his favorite thing to do as a kid. And thus the uh, jewelry here, uh, turquoise and silver. I'm pretty sure this is all Navajo stuff. Uh, so here is, uh, what do you call these, the, the, the Thai thing, anyway. Um, the real deal stuff. Now, Uncle John was asking me, you know, are you going to clean up the jewelry or whatever? And I'm not sure. I, I want, I want my grandpa's fingerprints on there and everything. The ring, the ring has the most patina on it. Okay, that's, this is all silver. Uh, but that one looks, uh, pretty dark, but I'll leave it up to the sun whether we have this professionally cleaned or not. I prefer to have my grandpa's fingerprints and patina on there. I don't know. You tell me. But we're going to put this next to my daddy's watch in the safe. And my son can wear these on special occasions. And then pass it off to somebody that's worthy when he's ready to croak. Uh, but I think Uncle John made a really good move sending it to my son. Because he totally 100% appreciates this. And he he totally broke up when he opened that package, John. And I, I was bawling my brains out when I put this out on the table here to try and do a video. It's my fifth take. And... Uh, the first four didn't go good. 
All right, so uh, my grandpa played the trumpet, and he was also a conductor at church for the band or whatever. And so he was a conductor, and he played the trumpet. And I think uh, my oldest uncle has the actual trumpet, which would be awesome, you know, to see again. Uh, I've held it a few times. But uh, my grandfather and grandmother on my mother's side were super cool. He drove Cadillacs. And Uncle John's going to have to correct me on this. I'm not sure. I haven't done research. But his last Cadillac that I remember, I think it was a 1967. It could have been a 64. It was gold. I remember driving in it. And even my mom... Uh, had a pink Cadillac after that. Uh, hers was uh, 60, 61 with the big fins. But my grandfather always loved Cadillacs. And so did his uh, Uncle John's uncles uh, collected Cadillacs. So they were all Cadillac guys. All right, so he... He taught me a few words of Navajo. I only remember two because he taught me these words when I was a little kid. My last memory was really tough uh, with my grandfather. There's so many good memories when I was young. My last memory was when he was in a hospital and he was dying. And I think he died within... 48 hours of when I saw him last and he was in a lot of pain and I drove to that hospital I think I was about 18 years old and he didn't have his eyes open and he was in a lot of pain but he knew I was there and he was squeezing my hand and my grandmother was there and we talked, and, and whenever I said something, he would squeeze my hand. So I knew he knew what I was telling him. And then I just totally lost it. I totally lost it and uh, started bawling my brains out. And he got upset and agitated, and he was moving around on the bed there uh, because he didn't want me to suffer you know he 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 didn't want me to be upset and he's trying to tell me that but he couldn't his eyes were closed and everything but he was squeezing my hand and my grandmother said okay you're upsetting him now he's he was moving around and getting agitated when I started bawling my brains out and that's my last memory and I I drove home I think it was 40 minutes and I just bawled my brains out the whole time. And that's my last memory, which was terrible. Um, but he knew I was there and he knew I was upset. And he wanted to tell me, uh, don't be upset. You know, this is how it goes. So that was brutal for me as a memory. Um, but... Uh, he was he was really cool. Uh, both of them were really super cool. And uh, when my parents got divorced, I think I was four or five years old, whatever. Uh, we stayed at their house for a while, and he had the coolest house ever. This house was so cool. It had push button uh, lights, so you press a button for on, press a button for off. The old school. And I think that house is worth millions now, but it was so cool. And he loved the tree in his front yard. He would trim this tree. It was a rare tree. Uh, it was very close to Seattle. So uh, uh, there's so many memories uh, I could go by, but I can go through that house right now in my mind, uh, having stayed there until we found a home. And my mom got remarried. Um, and there's lots of cool stories with Uncle John when I was there. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I want to thank you, Uncle John. Uh, 
This stuff is so precious. Uh, we're going to park this in the safe next to my daddy's watch. And my son's going to cherish it forever. We might clean this up. Uh, this is all silver, but it's, it definitely uh, got a lot of patina on it. But look at the cool designs on this. And my grandfather really loved the Navajo Indians. And thus the attire, uh, which, you know, right now he's all suited up. But uh, normally he'd be more casual uh, wearing stuff like this. And my son could rock this stuff uh, wearing it on special occasions. So, um, I'm glad I got through this video because the first four didn't go too good. It takes time, people. Um, but this bolo tie is super cool. And we might, uh, you know, um, put some treatment on the leather wrap, clean up this, leave that alone. I don't know. It's up to my son. And then when my son's ready to croak, he can pass it on to someone worthy that will appreciate this. Ah, what did I leave out? Uncle John, help me in the side if you can reply to all the stories and everything. Uh, there's so many. As a matter of fact, my logo, my first Uncle Jim logo, you see a little kid holding a Tom Thompson machine gun at the Christmas tree. That was when I was living here with my grandfather. I was four, five years old. And I'm at his living room in the Christmas tree. I got a Thompson machine gun and I got the very first blonde G.I. Joe. And that's why you see that logo. Actually, that logo is Uncle Jim 3 right now. And that was at his house, their house. And Uncle John's house, which was the coolest house ever. So, here's to my grandfather and uh, my grandmother. And this is in my reloading room. I just pulled it off the shelf right now. Uh, they're right there when I'm reloading. And I guess that's it. So... This kind of thing is very important uh, to me and my son and other people. And we carry on and keep our traditions and uh, our keepsakes. Uh, one more. Well, there's tons of stories. Um, I remember his dining room. He had this huge oak table because they had eight kids. And then we had grandkids. He loved his grandkids, by the way. He loved us so much. And we'd have these huge dinners. My grandmother was such a good cook. We'd have these huge dinners on this huge table. And below the table was this carpet made of patches of different colors. And he sewed it all together. And it was the coolest carpet you've ever seen. Uh, there's so many memories. And that was the neatest. And it had these, these sliding pocket, like oak doors, huge, heavy doors that would shut. It, oh, it was amazing house. And it was amazing memories. My grandmother cooked so good. And he loved it so much. And uh, he loved his grandkids. And uh, I'm going to start losing again. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Until next time. America.